Welcome to class. Today we'll be talking about growing shiitake and reishi mushroom. So shiitake cultivation began in China about a thousand years ago. Wu Shan Huang, a woodsman and wild mushroom hunter, he discovered that this desirable mushroom on felled tree while he was chopping wood. After cutting the trees into log, the mushroom grew larger and more vigorous, and the more he cuts, the more mushroom there were. Occasionally, after mushroom uh, um, formation and cutting, there were no more mushroom for years. When this happened, it is said that he beat the log vigorously out of frustration. Several days after beating the log, mushroom grew out. So this is maybe the origin of, of the practice of cutting and beating log for shiitake production, a method to shock the fungus used by some today. So there are three primary methods to grow shiitake. One is on a sawdust block where the fungus produced the brown layer inside a bag, as displayed here. And two, on a sawdust block where the fungus produced the brown layer outside of the bag, as displayed here. And number three is on natural uh, wood log. Shiitake can also be grown on uh, straw, but the yields are very poor, so we won't discuss this method. If you do use store, uh, straw and try to use straw, please sterilize the straw before inoculation. There are many strains of shiitake. Some are better suited for one production strategy than other, and some do better at warmer climate than better temperature. And some are very sensitive to carbon dioxide level, which influenced by bag size, filter patch size, substrate, and growing room. So if you purchase a strain of shiitake, be sure to get information on its particular demands for optimum growing condition. So here, this is a, a chart from Field Forest Products, so most of the mushroom production uh, company out there will have this some type of strain chart like this and you can see there's a wide range variety that's best suited for beginner it's pretty forgiving and then there's some warm weather strains some cold weather uh, strain as well and you see the caps the variation in the caps as well variation in fruiting temperature and then <clears throat> there is uh, only a couple winter strains around Shiitake production, so uh, we're going to talk about browning inside a bag first. In this method, a standard supplemented sawdust recipe is used. Spawn run is completed in a week, in weeks or in months, depending on the strain of shiitake. So as colonization is nearing completion, the white mycelium on the outer surface will begin to turn brown. Around this time, the surface will develop bumps, a process called popcorning. Pins will begin to crack, uh, to, uh, to crack the surface. At this time, the bag can be removed entirely. The bag is then placed in a fruiting room with high humidity, about 70 to 90%, and a mild temperature from 60 to 65. Some strain will grow at higher temperature. You can see the light browning right here on the uh, mycelium, and you see popcorning starting to occur. That, that's, when, uh, that's when you want to wait till this thing turn all brown. So if the bag is fully colonized or at least partially uh, brown uh, yet will not fruit, place the bag in the refrigerator for two or three more days. So here you see that the popcorn start turning brown. Uh, when you see this and you don't see any fruit, you want to shock the fungus. So when you put it into the refrigerator, this cold shock often stimulates the block to fruits. Some strain will begin to fruit before the skin turns brown. This is also normal. When you buy or obtain your own culture of shiitake strain, ask about the appropriate growing condition for a particular strain. When the skin is brown, a block may exude droplets of colored water. This too is normal if you are growing shiitake in a growing room without heat or air conditioning. Cool nights are often enough to stimulate fruiting. Some growers hit the block with their hand or sl slightly drop the block on a table. 
the physical shock seems to have pin initiation. If you do do this, do not break the block. I have no recommendation for this uh, practice. Most evidence in favor of physical shock is, is anecdotal. But there is a lot of it. Hitting colonized log in the forest with the back of an axe to simulate fooding is an ancient practice, as mentioned earlier. After harvesting the first break or flush of shiitake mushroom, place the block back on the shelf in your growing room and let them rest for one to two weeks. This caused them to lose some water. So after this rest period, soak the block in water for four or more hours until the block are almost back to their original weight. You will want to weight down the buoyant block with bricks or something else heavy. Uh, in this case, the re, uh, rebar was placed on top to hold down the blocks. Then put the rehydrated block back into the fruiting room for another crop of mushroom. Repeat this for a third break. If you develop your skill and optimize production, you may get as many as 10 breaks. I know a grower in Japan who get 12 breaks from a block. Most of us, however, stop after a few cropping cycles. There are no official standards in the U.S. for shiitake, but the following is commonly used to grade shiitake mushroom. You have extra large or jumbo, which is about 4.5 uh, inches in diameter or larger. Then you have large grade, which is 3.4 to 4.5 inches. Then you have medium grade, which is 2.5 to 3.5 inches, and small, which is 2 to 2.5 inches. Typically, the margin of a cap must still be in row, or there will be a number 2 quality. Sizes smaller than number 2 inches are usually considered number 2 quality. Any deform deformity or imperfection makes the mushroom a number 2. Many shiitake are imported from China, especially when dehydrated. Curiously, many prefer strains in China have thin flesh. So here you see, these are premium quality, uh, where it's number one, and you see this number two, where it's the caps are fully open, uh, you know, the stalks are pretty weak. So this is a second method to production uh, to shiitake production, and this is browning outside a bag. This method requires careful manipulation of temperature and humidity, and should be tried after the first method is mastered. There are many advantages of browning outside of bags. Primarily, the fully colonized and brown block can be held in cold condition in a dormant state for many weeks or maybe months. They also ship well. You get to decide when you want to fruit the block, and you will see it has a unique feature. It produces a thick brown layer of mycelium on the outside of the sawdust block. You can think of this brown layer like a bark on a tree. It provides stru structural integrity, protection, and water retainment. Some growers take full advantage of the brown layer. The plastic bag is completely removed once it has formed, and the block is stored dormant in a cool place for a short to long period of time. So in this method, browning outside the bag, a standard supplement sawdust recipe is used. Spawn run is completed in weeks or months, depending on the strain of shiitake. As colonization is nearing completion, the white mycelium on the out outer surface will begin to turn brown. Around this time, um, the, blo the block, the bag is completely taken off, and the block is kept in a room held at 64, 68 Fahrenheit, and either fluctuating off 95 humidity for four weeks. The block will form a brown skin over over this time and will be ready for storage. This is the brown skin you can see. Beautiful brown skin protecting the whole block. Once the block is brown, the fully colonized block can be held in cold, cool condition in a dormant state for many weeks or maybe months. To initiate uh, Primordia, soaks the block in cool water for four or more hours until the block is almost back to its original weight. Fruit in a room held at 64 to 68 uh, Fahrenheit at 80 to 95 percent relative humidity. 
the last method is uh, you know growing shiitake on natural wood. This method of growing shiitake requires very little equipment. So first, you want to find some suitable uh, hardwood. Uh, cut them four to eight to eight inches wide and two to four feet uh, long. You want fresh log with fully intact bark. Then you want to inoculate the logs soon after harvest uh, to about three weeks after they were harvested. This interval between the harvest and inoculation provides time for antifungal compound in the wood to dissipate. Oak, poplar, maple, alder, ash, beech, hickory, and other hardware are suitable. I would avoid conifers um, in general. You can buy or you can uh, make inoculate, inoculated dowel sticks each 3 to 8 inches in diameter and put 1 inches long or about 1 inches long or you could buy or make solder spawn to make dowel spawn cut a dowel stick into pieces soak the pieces in water for 24 hours sterilize and inoculate them in grain spawn and liquid culture or auger pieces which will take longer so here I pulled this up from online this is uh, you know north spore but you can see the mushroom and tree species compatibility. Uh, there are a number of uh, trees. Uh, let's say if you're doing shiitake, uh, it's recommended to use alder, beech, uh, hornbeam, maple, oaks, and sweet gum. But there's many other trees that are also acceptable. Timing log harvest with sap flow can help increase Yield and longevity of your mushroom. This typically coincides with dormancy cycle. Two ideal time for harvest is during the fall. About one third of the tree's leaves have changed color through leaf drops, and in the late winter to early spring before buds swell and leaf out. These are both time when sugary saps in the tree will be concentrated in the wood, providing nutrient for mycelial growth, and the bark should be tight, reducing a risk of slippage. For fall inoculation in grow zone 7 and higher, we recommend protecting logs from freezing temperature and drying wind. Uh, log can be overwinter in heated space, tuck away in close to wall uh, of heated structure or store close to the ground and cover with leaves and bark. So any logs will work. You can use branches or sapling if that is what you have available. Small diameter wood will colonize faster but will not produce for as many seasons as large one. You don't want to uh, you don't want the log to be so heavy that it's difficult to use and carry. For drilling method a four to six inches diameter with a uh, three to four feet sorry for drilling method a four to six uh, inches diameter with a three to four feet length is ideal. For the total method uh, they can be used up to a foot or more in diameter and 6 to 18 inches high. The wonderful things about mushroom logs is that you will get multiple years worth of mushroom without having to re-inoculate your logs. On average, a mushroom log will produce for one year per one inch of diameter of the log. So if you inoculate a five inch diameter oak log with shiitake spawn, it will most likely be producing for five years or more. So, after you uh, buy the inoculum and drill the hole to inoculate uh, the log, drill holes space a few inches apart, stagger a row for holes, then you want to hammer in the colonized dowel into the hole or fill each hole with sawdust spawn. Seal the hole with molten wax, cheese wax, paraffin, or bee wax uh, to, keep, to be, keep in moisture and uh, avoid contamination. Consider waxing the end of the log if you live in a dry environment. Otherwise, don't bother. The log should be placed in the shade and out of the sun to avoid desiccation. If you live in an area with hot and dry weather, the log may have to be covered with a pile of leaves and sprinkled frequently. After about six months to a full year, or as much as a year and a half, the log will be ready to fruit. Rain during, the, during mild temperature and high humidity may be enough to trigger fruiting, but you may need to either sprinkle the log with water until they are 
thoroughly moist or soaked. Or you should put them in a cold bath for 24 hours. That will stimulate fruiting. You can soak the log again in two to three months and do this one or two more times in a year. I routinely fruit inoculate a log in an interval of almost exactly 12 months by submerging the log in water for 24 hours. Inoculated log may fruit for several years using this method. Next, we're going to talk about Rishi or Ganoderma. This is the mushroom of immortality. So, in cultivation, uh, people grow a Rishi on the standard wood recipes in a standard filter bag, but plastic pots are commonly used. <coughs> rishi is grown, going to grow vertically, so if bags are used, simply cut the top of the bag after colonization. If pots are used, cover with plastic bag and remove the plastic bag after colonization. You could also use a paper-based large cup or a pot if you keep it moist. Spawn run in a standard filter bag takes three to five weeks at room temperature. Primordia or self-initiated when the substrate is fully colonized. While Rishi can tolerate low humidity than other mushroom we grow, provided with high humidity, 80 to 95 for optimal growth rate. It's not a fast grower, the total time to harvest may be three months or more, depending on the size of the cat desire. The fruiting room can be room temperature or cooler. Some light, you know, enough to, for you to read uh, something is necessary for primordial initiation. Stock will be first evidence of, fru of the fruiting bodies if you do not introduce fresh air by cutting off the top of the bags you will be encouraging high level of carbon dioxide in the bag and the stalk will elongate. You may or may not want long stalk, but you are somewhat in control of what you want the final fruiting structure to look like. Let the stalk grow to the desired height in the sealed bag, then remove the top half of the bag uh, for caps or conks formation. Otherwise, like I said, you know, high carbon dioxide will promote antlers devel uh, developments. In fresh air, the cap will continue to grow to a certain size, but the stalk will stop growing. Rishi can also be grown on log, uh, inoculated as described above for shiitake. The mycelium Rishi knit together very tightly in sawdust. Some environmental awareness entrepreneur produce packaging material out of colonized sawdust to replace styrofoam. If you read or hear about packing material or building blocks made of cultivated fungi, it is likely mycelial growth of Rishi. But keep in mind the energy that's required to produce the sterile grains, the sterile uh, woods, and the time it takes to colonize this block. Thank you and see you next week.